<laughs> Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Dynamic Data and Capabilities uh, Working Group for RPFS. Uh, today is January 29th and uh, I'm going to share my screen so we can start the meeting. Um, so everyone please fill out the, uh, the notes. Uh, Today I'm going to lead this, but as you'll see later, I'll later ask for uh, volunteers to queue up for leading the next uh, sessions. Um, and also please fill in the, uh, the weekly updates uh, far below. Um, okay. Um, is there a volunteer to take notes today? Uh, I can do it. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, so let's start with the round of uh, updates. Um, first on the list is André Cruz Chatazor. Hello. Oh. I think Pedro. Yeah, you, you cut off the internet is, is flaky. Oh, weird. Yeah. I cut off? Yeah. Yeah, I can yeah, hear you yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. You can't hear I, I only heard like, uh, uh, let's start for, uh, with a round off and then you get up. <laughs> yeah, yeah? Uh, is it okay now? Yeah, yeah, it's nice. That's weird, I'm, I'm tethered, but uh, okay. So um, let's start with the, round, with the rounds of uh, updates. Andre, uh, you're the first one, can you go? Yeah, all right, so. In terms of what I've concluded, uh, I've finished the work, pl work plan for the IDM. Uh, it's basically a spreadsheet um, that organizes the, um, the um, breakdown document into milestones. And each milestone has an objectives, uh, like OKRs. Um, and they have uh, assignees for those, for those entries, and also uh, uh, an estimate of duration of those tasks. Um, that's basically it, you, you can check it. Uh, also, along the way, I've refactored the IDM breakdown document uh, because the organization that it has, that it has now is better. Uh, I think it's, it's much better. Um, you can also check uh, for the new structure there. And I've, I've also coordinated uh, two brainstorm sessions on identity top topics. Um, that people participated during the last the last week. Uh, in progress, I'm working on two papers at the moment. Uh, one uh, about the concept of IDM, which is you know a summary, uh, basically a summary of the RFC that we made, uh, Pedro and I and, and João, so that we can present a two-page summary of the RFC, so that we can present on um, the reboot web of trust uh, next month. Um, and also, I will be working on another paper, which is the IDM spec, which um, is a document that has some uh, interfaces, well-defined interfaces of the, the IDM core and the, the IDM client, um, and define some other concepts in terms of how can the client communicate with, with IDM core, because there are a lot of scenarios going on, um, and that's basically it. Uh, the first paper is still empty because it will be the easiest one, just a port of the RFC and, and make, it, make it smaller. The, the spec uh, paper already has a few stuff in there, but it's very drafty. Uh, I'm just sketching things um, and experimenting with interfaces, so it, it looks ugly right now. <laughs> Don't check it <laughs> now because it's, it's ugly. Um, and uh, I'm not, not blocked in anything. And my next uh, things, uh, just one. Uh, which is to create a small presentation about the IDM project. And by small presentation, I mean um, small PDF alike or PowerPoint presentation for, um, to present to people, uh, including the people that will uh, actually be, be implementing IDM, so that they understand um, what IDM tries to solve uh, and how. Um, and that's basically it, I think. Cool, thank you, Andre. Um, just so people know, know a bit more about, uh, about the context. So uh, very early next March, uh, there's going to be the eighth edition of Rebooting Web of Trust um, conference. There's a call for 
well, to participate, you, you have to propose a set of papers that people can then later choose to, to elaborate during the, the, the gathering itself. It's not a conference, it's more of a, I don't know, a symposium. Or something. Um, and, and, then, and then that's what we're, we're, uh, Andre is, is doing now, so that we can apply before the end of the month. So yeah, also if anyone is, is uh, willing to, to join us, uh, there is a, a, an event uh, entry on Protocol Labs uh, event management repo. I think it's uh, private, not sure, but uh, uh, if if you want, if you're planning on attending, or if you want to attend, please, uh, you can also get get in touch with with, uh, with some of us. Any questions for Andre on this? No. All right. So next in line is Adin. Congratulations, Adin. Uh, yeah, so my, my update is going to sound a lot like it was about two weeks ago, uh, which is I'm going to um, catch up on some emails and figure out all of the things and meetings that I have missed in the last week. I am through most of the, I'm through some of the videos, but there are more to be watched. Um, Hello. Some documentation on um, the peer-based concepts. Uh, I'm not sure if we have a new name yet, but that's what I last heard, so I'm going with that. And uh, if I have time, I'm going to try and bug. We'll see whether this happens this week or next week. Try and bug some of the libp2p folks over how to make sure that we can. Uh, I can take the append-only DAG stuff that I have and make that work in a over public channels as opposed to just channels where you know who you're talking to already based on their peer IDs. Um, and I have an agenda item for the end to sort of clarify from the, uh, the, the DID or the IPID uh, discussion just being like, hey, you guys didn't realize, didn't understand what I posted so much. Ask me some questions. Here's what I was thinking. Um, for the end now. Yeah, that would be very appreciated. Accept uh, that one. Any question for it then? No, okay. So let's talk about the that identity thing at the end. Um, so next, it's me, I guess. Um, last week I um, concluded uh, a fix to Delta CRDTs which is to make the RGA CRDT not dependent on causal delivery. Um, so a great insight by, by researcher Carlos Baquero, uh, where he gave the idea that we could um, accumulate uh, non-mergeable um, edges for, for uh, the RGA and then try to merge them and if not, keep them in a, in a stash as part of the state. And so that's what I implemented and I, um, I did a bunch of tests, very thorough tests of, of random permutations on all the messages. Uh, and I haven't been able to break it so far, but uh, help is on that is, is appreciated. Um, oh, that's, that's great. Victor is, is telling us that, that Ron 2.0 works like, like that. That's... Uh, that's uh, also super, super interesting. Uh, that's a, so That's a good sign. <laughs> that's a good sign, exactly. Uh, so IPFS pop sub room, I've updated. So there's a, a, a breaking change on a private, uh, well, not breaking change, but there's a private API change on JS IPFS, which we were relying on, which is the LPTP node uh, accessor, which now is going to be made public because so many people use it. Uh, and well, pub public and, and documented. Um, so we're supporting both, uh, trying to support both versions of that public API. And the first pass was upgrading IPFS pop to room to, to do that. Next step is going to be, uh, well, I'm already started it to support that on Peerbase. Um, and also I've, I've, I've had some, some discussions around, uh, well, the LIP2P transport uh, reconnect. Uh, which was 
uh, started stemmed from discussions around um, uh, WebSocket Star multi support for starting offline and then recovering from being offline, rebinding or trying to, to bind to uh, remote servers, uh, remote relay servers. And uh, that turned out to be a bigger lip P2P issue, well issue or uh, endeavor, um, hopefully to support, better support uh, offline uh, reconnect uh, use cases. Uh, in line with that, uh, I missed last week's um, uh, local and off offline uh, working group uh, meetup uh, meeting uh, you should attend. Uh, I missed last one, I, unfortunately. Plan to attend the next one, but uh, that's something related to that. So offline support for uh, JS IPFS. Um, and that's, oh yes, and next, uh, well, this weekend, I'm going to be at uh, Brussels for FOSDEM 2019 um, for, for catching up and, and watching some, hopefully attending some, some interesting uh, sessions. Um, any questions from me? Yeah, Dirk? Um, I had a question about the uh, CRDT stuff you've been doing. Um, so you said you've already tested that out and it's working. Is that uh, in a PR somewhere? Oh yeah, it was it was merged on double CRDTs. That there's a, a PR. I can I can find you that. It's um, I, I I can uh, I will not I'll not interrupt interrupt this for now. I I can let you send you the PR. Uh, that's part of the RGA itself. Uh, you're probably asking about uh, the current the current state of of the the thing that Jim is is, is working on on vector clocks synchronization. That's that's a, a different a different uh, issue. I think it's not related. Uh, the desynchronization that Jim is is seeing. Not sure if if that was. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Uh, Andre Satazar, you were raising your hand. It's not not really a question. It's just a suggestion, uh, which is there will be a session on FOSDEM. Uh, I posted on on RC in the in the IPFS identity channel. Yeah. Which is this one? I will put on on um, Zoom. Uh, you might want to attend that. It's not really um, in line with with the solutions that we are going to adopt um, in terms of you know we are adopting OpenStern and so on. I don't think uh, the solution there is really what we are going to to go uh, through. But uh, it might be useful to attend and see what they are doing. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll add that to the list of of, of sessions. Um, all right. Any more questions for 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 me? No. Oh. Cool. So next up is let me get back to the notes. Okay. So Jim. Okay. So let's see. Where's my notes? Um, so I went to uh, three different working groups last week, um, but um, la last last week I, I gave a little demo and I showed that hey everything's working, and then immediately afterwards I discovered that actually everything isn't working. <laughs> uh, so I'd I'd merged uh, Pedro's uh, CRDT fixes, and I think the new CRDT is working really good at the CRDT level, at the RGA. Um, yeah, it, it before. It has these uh, unmerged edges that have been added to the CRDT, and it sort of keeps them around. And then, uh, um, but then when randomly, so uh, the we have one test in PeerBase called uh, um, uh, collaboration random, and it's a fuzzing test basically. Like its 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 whole purpose is to try to get random combinations of. It's basically you set so x number of peers, and they all type random characters at the end. And it all merges it together, and you run it for you know so many uh, characters. So if you have like, uh, I, I was testing with three peers, and each peer t testing or typing thirty characters uh, at random with random delays, and then at the end you have ninety characters, and all three of the peers should have the same ninety characters at the end. Um, but what was happening was um, most of the time it would work, uh, maybe like five percent of the time, ten percent of the time it would just stop it would never one of the peers would never ever get the full set of characters 
And uh, I thought, oh, well, that's easy. That's going to be one line fix somewhere. <laughs> so a week later, <laughs> uh, that's where they spent most of the week on. So um, there's some issues. Um, I'm going to just take a minute just to show what I was doing uh, visually, because uh, it's going to be impossible to explain. But basically, the idea, idea is trace everything, every single thing that's happening in each of the peers and log it all. So it's more than just logging, it's tracing because you can reconstruct what actually happened from that data. So that's what I did this week. So uh, if I can get past this next week, I want to do some uh, little offline type apps. Uh, that's me. Cool. Thank you, Jim. Um, so I, I, added a, I added a comment on, on, on that issue, uh, which I, I've, been, I've been sketching out. Uh, and I think I know, I, I, well, I think I know, but famous last words, uh, the solution. Um, but yeah, let's, let's talk, let's talk that. I'll, I'd love to see the, what, what you have for, uh, tracing. Uh, oh, you had, you had a demo, right? You have a, yeah, Jim. Yeah, I just put it. Nice. Thank you. Uh, any question for Jim so far? All right. So let's, uh, proceed. Uh, Andres Souza. So hi guys. So last week we had the meeting about the uh, discuss identity profile. It was really technical, but I was present. Uh, after the meeting, Salazar told me to add the notes on on GitHub. I hope that every everyone every one of you could see them. Um, so from last week until yesterday, I was working on the homepage and profile page, the concept for for IDM. It has already uh, an issue, a new issue on on the GPR. The, sorry, the PM IDM. Uh, Or if you have an active device which was robbed uh, by, by, by any case and you can see its location or what is happening with it. Uh, just, just an example. Uh, I was looking uh, for the Keybase and block stack as a reference for, for IDM as well. Already, if you had this, and the point for the grip. Uh, you can see it, uh, it's on the notes as well. So uh, another update was the style guide atoms because I'm following the atomic design. I've uh, included uh, some missing textiles for you uh, for larger scales. And then in progress, I have right now the the wireframing and uh, designed the other pages for IDM, uh, considering the proof concept and the, the IA decisions. And then, yeah, uh, until maybe next week, I will I will collaborate with Andre for the Salazar for the IDM presentation, and we'll com continue with that. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, thank you, Andre. Um, yeah, I, I took a quick peek to the. IDM information architecture scheme. It looks really thorough and complete, but I'll, I'll, I'll advise everyone to take like a, a deeper look to, to that. And, yeah, it's, and I'll ask questions and see. And see. Yeah, it's really detailed. So any, any, any question regarding the screens or the journeys or any specific detail, yeah, just uh, let me know on GitHub and we'll update that, yeah. Uh, nice. Thank you. Uh, any I question? Would like to, for Andre? Yeah, I would like to, to add something, which is I, I've posted here um, the, one of the images of the IDM concept. Uh, it's here on, on the Zoom chat. If you could, um, if you could share a screen or something, um, it would be nice so that everyone could, could see uh, the look of, the look of and feel of it. Um, anyway, I will actually share my screen with quickly. Let me see if we can. Yeah, okay. Another so, detail which I, I'm missing to, to point out on, on the agenda was uh, we made a decision about the um, lock, lock time for the app because we have a, a lot of information which is encrypted. So if you have any sort of uh, expiration lock that provides you a, a way to reveal information after entering a password, that, that will be helpful regarding the dashboard, for, for example, because since you have the, all the details uh, about the, the multiple IDs, exposed in a way after you <coughs> typing the password you can see that yeah you can populate the dashboard or the home page uh, more easily 
can you see my screen, by the way? Yes. Right. So um, bear in mind that the features that you are, you are seeing in the screen is not the purpose of this image. It's just for you to, to feel how the, the Y looks, will look like and the concept that we are trying to explore. So we're trying to explore this uh, passport-alike or a document-alike uh, feel to the, to the application. So if you actually, if actually zoom, you, you, you see what I mean by these illustrations, so that people can... Um, can uh, associate this, this type of application to things that they, they are um, uh, used to, to, to know, basically. Something they, that is stressful. Yeah, something that is stressful. Um, in terms of features, we'll, we'll figure, figure the, the final layout and, and things like that. It's just a concept. And if, you, if, you, um, if, you, if possible, it will be nice to get some feedback if you, if you like this concept or, or, or not. That's it. Yeah, the concept is, I suppose, is on, on GitHub. It's just you, you can read it there and, and add your comments. Yeah. Okay. And then there's uh, you, you showed it briefly, Andre. There is the, the the part of the the information architecture diagram. Yes. Yes. As long okay, as we have, already have the, the screen share. Yeah. Um, I, I, can Can you see my screen still? Yes. All right, so let me open that. So this is a, a diagram that we made. It's like, I, I'm zooming because it's, it's quite big. Mm -hmm. So essentially what we have here is um, all, all the user journeys and all the, the features inside of, of, of small pages that are outlined here. Um, you might check, check it out and give us feedback as well. Um, it's quite complex, but I think it outlines well the, what IBM really will have in terms of the MVP and so on. Um, uh, so if an issue on, on GitHub, you, you may also <laughs> check it out in the comments as well. Uh, and please be, be aware that this diagram works only for the MVP for now. Okay, but it's still quite a number of, of screens and, and information bits. Um, so I'm not sure if, if there is like a subset of this that is going to, to work out on the MVP or if it's the whole thing that you have planned. Uh, in, in terms of the information, I understand it's still um, it's just opening issues so that we can expose what's going on uh, at the moment. Of course, we, we will be condensing every, everything in, in a single, into a single document and, and so on. That's why I'm doing the papers and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the whole features that you see here, uh, these are the MVP um, uh, that we'll have for, for June, end of June, basically. Okay. Um, that's it. Okay, thank you. Any questions to Andre? Okay, uh, thank you, Andre. Uh, if you could stop sharing. Uh, next up is, sorry, back to the list. Um, Pedro. Okay, so my updates for this week. Um, I was not able to open the PR um, as I was supposed to. Um, I found some, I, I was improving it, and then I found a bug that is not related with this, with this component, but I am also fixing that bug, and then I will try to, to open the PR with the bug fixer. Um, uh, me and Andre Cruz, we also have been chatting with Margot about the privacy policy of the specified. Um, we already received the draft and we are now, uh, we, we have, uh, uh, we gave, we gave Margot uh, our feedback and we are waiting for the next iteration. Um, so I did release uh, a new version of JSIPFSIO, it's not related with uh, BBC but I did it uh, with some, some new languages. Um, and then what I will do next, I will implement the fast uh, scale animation on the app and also the morph animation on the app. Um, and I promise you all that next week I will have a demo uh, to show you how things are smooth uh, on, on this classifier. <laughs> and that's it. Cool, thank you, Pedro. Any question for Pedro? 
questions. No, all right. So Dirk, I think you're next. Yeah, um, so this week I was working on a couple of things related to discovery and membership uh, that is for peer base. So uh, when we're establishing membership, um, I, I was trying to reduce the amount of time it takes for peers to discover each other and then to actually uh, form a, a convergent membership. Uh, so I was kind of looking at the existing membership protocol and made some small changes there that improved um, improved that time. And I've done a little bit of uh, experimentation to demonstrate how much it improved. And then while I was thinking about that, I realized that there's quite a lot of uh, round trips, even just to get to that stage uh, where we're talking to the discovery server and then we're talking through flood sub. So we have to set up a flood sub connection and then send some messages. Um, and so I came up with a, a concept of how we could build our own kind of sub protocol in order to reduce the number of round trips that's specifically about discovery and membership. So I wrote a GitHub issue about it. Um, I just put it in the uh, CryptPad chat there if you guys want to take a look at it. And if anyone has any comments, I'd appreciate it. And I implemented that in the last couple of days. So I have it working. It seems like there are some issues still. Um, so by the way, it uses the same protocol that we use for uh, for sending around CRDTs, so the push and pull protocol. And so because there are still some issues around that uh, working completely correctly, I'm seeing some issues in establishing membership as well. So it sort of depends on the work that's ongoing there. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you, it's really cool that, that uh you were able to, to use the, the same protocol for also for membership dissemination. It's really cool and use a CRDT. So it's very, very meta. <laughs> um, thank you. Any question for Dirk? No. All right. So, um, okay. So we're going to, I think it's all, unless Victor, you want to, to give your update, you haven't put your name there. Oh, nothing interesting. Actually, I'm, my black box text testing now works, so I'm doing debugging and I will be doing debugging at least for another week. So, that is the status. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Victor. Uh, yeah. Hey. Hello. Me. Can I hear you? Uh, I, I okay. can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So uh, yeah, I was mostly focused on collaborations work last week, but there's a couple of things that I want to say. Oh, so first of all, I really like the identity manager uh, like visual work. Um, it looks very trustworthy and uh, and but also kind of friendly. But um, I guess one thing that I want to point out is that the way that the documents work, it's it reminds me very much of like kind of European style, like more. Uh, modern design, but I think for Americans, it might actually not make them think of like a passport or something because our passports look very different, and like very garish and horrible. So it's just, just something, you know, like kind of a side side note. Um, yeah, I guess the, the two things that I wanted to point out is that we now finally have a real local working group uh, as of last week. Uh, local was an O instead of A. Uh, for collaboration, um, so that's that's really good. And the other thing that I, I want to draw some attention to is the discussion of the um, the kind of the reconnection uh, API. Um, that's uh, I, I guess Pedro mentioned already. Uh, yeah, so please chime in with comments on that because I think that's like pretty important to define that API well uh, and kind of push things into lib P2P land so that we don't have to worry about them in user space. So uh, please give that some support. Yeah. Well, thank you, Arkady. Your name was not on the, at in the list and I was scrolling oh. down and seeing oh, that. It, oh, yeah. so, oh, sorry, I forgot to put it no, in no, there. No, I added you, yeah. you yeah. already, sorry. But. Yeah, I, I put it in the updates, yeah, my bad. No worries. Um, yeah, that's super super interesting. The 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 lip P2P. If you if you could uh, all um, check it out and see, and see what what you think. My my sense is that the the reconnect behavior should be the def default 
um, behavior. So out of the box, it uh, should have a good offline uh, intermittent uh, connectivity uh, behavior. Uh, but of course, the 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 API is 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 very important, and also the the for people that are more into the P two P transports, uh, it's also important to define the the, the transport uh, interface that's going to be provided to uh, I'd say switch, um, so that it manages is able to manage uh, reconnect and retries. Um, well, um, any questions for Kadi? Oh, uh, the GitHub issue, there was a question. Uh, yeah, I think I added on my my one, uh, my update. Yeah, I think it's on Pedro's, uh, Pedro's updates. Yeah, I'm going to to paste, paste you on, on the Zoom yeah. chat anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the big balancing act there is like kind of pushing abstraction in when maybe different transports have like kind of dramatically different reconnection costs. So that's, uh, we should, have you know as many people as possible chime in there to get different perspectives. Yeah, of course, um, that's a good, a good, uh, um, a good question. Um, cool. Uh, so we can, I think, step into unless there are any questions for Arkady. No, we can step into uh, the next part of the of the agenda. Uh, so first, I'm going to ask. Um, for a volunteer to lead the next uh, month's uh, meetings uh, going on with the, with the uh, make these uh, meetings more, more productive and also so to rotate the, 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 the leader of the meetings. Um, is there anyone volunteering to, it doesn't have to be the whole month, we can perhaps split it in two, uh, whatever you're comfortable with. Is anyone has, has a particular interest in, in Helping us with leading the the meetings. Um, I can I can lead the initial ones, but I have to be um, out for the the, um, the reboot web of trust ones because yeah. I won't yeah. be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. I, yeah, I, I can step in as well. Nice, Arkady. Thank you. Uh, between you, you and Andre, we can, I mean, we can do uh, alternate, for instance, if no one else is interested, or we can alternate between anyone that is interested in volunteering, and then, and then we, uh, we can still do, we evaluate this at, by, by later if uh, availability is not, is not uh, what expected. Um, uh, then, then also volunteered. Uh, thank you, Dean. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, let's do. Uh, hello. Oh, okay, I, we we could we have. Yeah, we could I, I'm having a bad internet day. Um, Maybe but, it's uh, ourselves too. I don't know. Uh, or or Zoom is bad, having a, a bad uh, a bad day. Um, sorry about that. I'm I'm tethered using Ethernet uh, to the router directly, um, almost directly. Um, I was saying I was saying that one thing to, to consider is to give authorization to the Zoom account because the Zoom account um, for the DDC is I think you are the owner and if you, if you wanna if we want to to coordinate the next meetings we won't be able to use the same Zoom meeting ID and for instance I don't really have a Zoom account for instance I think uh, it's a paid paid account or something so I don't really web have one um, that's an issue. Yeah, I'll ask around IT for Protocol Labs, see how, how that uh, can work. I'm sure we, 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 can, we can come up with something. Uh, so Zoom, Zoom account delegation uh, and schedule, schedule, session. I'll do some, some random assignments for, for, for each one of the sessions. And, and if, you, if you can't do it, we, we, we please, please uh, tell on, GitHub, on the GitHub, respective GitHub issue. I'll ping you. I'll uh, mention you on, on GitHub for that. Um, thank you uh, for the, the volunteers. All right, so now I think we have a, a demo. Uh, Jim is going to show us some tracing reconstruction that he's been doing uh, while uh, debugging uh, a hard to find bug on, on Peerbase. Okay, yeah, so this is, I guess, it's less of a demo, it's just showing you how I was going about it. Um, the problem is, you know, the bug only happened, or 
I'll share my screen first here. So can everybody see that? So um, so this is this is peer base here. And if I look in the test directory, here's our tests. And the one particular test which I'm talking about here is the collaboration random. And basically it starts up a number of peers. So here I'm running a Node.js, so it'll be three peers and types in 30 characters per peer. And then uh, there's a, um, down here, there's a, this is the delay between each character that gets typed. Now, when you run the test, it doesn't really look like much. Um, so I, I shortened the test, so it's only three peers here, so it's quicker to run. So in this case, it's passing. Um, so, but what, what I was seeing before was that it wasn't, um, it would run and then it would stall out. So I, in order to debug that, I turned up the debugging and then I added a bunch of console logs. So it, it's not silent anymore. Oh, is that too, uh, I get this sometimes. Ah. Um, I think there's a, sometimes the node process there. You can do a kill all nodes. Uh, I think that that's a Mac. Is that a Mac? So you can look yeah, it. let's see if I can. See. Well, I'm not going to have other. I've got way too many nodes running it. I don't mm. want to kill all nodes. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I will. Maybe I will. Huh? Okay. Kill all nodes. There. Okay. Um, this would be more fun. So that, that's what it looks like after I had all my tracing stuff. And I'm running a, a few changes back here. See, that it passed that time. Um, but it's sort of random, so sometimes it'll fail. I don't know if I'll get it to do it. So, because it's just, um, if you increase the number of peers, you increase the number of characters typed, the chances that you're going to hit a random situation increases. Um, so, of course, it's a demo, so I won't actually do it. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> passing all the time. <laughs> yeah, but but um, that's okay because like I've got some yeah. uh, older older ones are caught captured here. So um, maybe it's because the the CPU CPU is being um, end over to to Zoom, and it's it's uh, <laughs> it, it could totally be something like that. So it's the randomness matters. So I'm going to show you one which I've got. So, actually, that's the thumb. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, pay no attention to how I'm organizing my files. It's, it's a mess. So, this is what it would actually look like when it failed. What would happen was it would stall here. It wouldn't actually finish. It would never get to the part where it su succeeded. Um, but what I was doing was I was tracing back. So. I could, so I, I used, I added a little bit of color because it was just this, this line, this file is now 2000 lines long, um, but there's basically three peers uh, and I collected I made some manual notes here. So um, basically in this case I have, I just took the last three characters of the peer ID just to make it simple. And the nice thing about our tests is they, they have, the, the peer IDs are consistent every single time because we're, Pre-generating the, the the peer keys. So, um, so anyways, uh, in this particular situation, we had three peers. So, UMQ90 um, got to this state, and, and there were 90 characters. If I scroll back up, uh, UMS, which was a different peer, it also got to 90 characters. If I scroll back up here, uh, SHC, it got only 88 characters. So for some reason, these two little characters went missing. I added some like uh, accents and stuff because I wanted to have 90 different separate symbols. Um, and it's like, why? It's like, they'll never ever converge. And then the, the interesting thing was I was looking here is um, 
I'm also printing out, I wrote a little routine to take our, our vector clocks, which is basically peer ID and an incrementing number. And uh, for each character that's typed, uh, and our vector clocks got complete. So 30, 30 characters there, for each of them, 30 characters there, 30 characters there. So it's like, this one got all the vector clocks. Why is there a little gap here? So, um, but anyway, so th basically the technique is I've got dumping lots of stuff. So these big long hex things here are the actual CRDT. I serialized it and printed them out as base um, 64 or base 48. Um, so I could like reconstruct them later. So I, I um, created, because just the, the dumps are not interesting to me, I, I created a, a A little JavaScript program, which is actually not that little now, but um, that takes takes the uh, the the dump, the the trace, and then pretty prints it basically. So if I run if I run that one, so I had the debug output, which was just the extra console logging that I added. And then if I run this one, it's now. It was two thousand characters before. Now it's fifteen thousand. 2,000 lines now, it's 15,000 lines. But, but I've got, um, let's see, it'd be closer. So it, it's impossible to really understand this, but like I, I've, this is where the letter nine was typed into the, um, so somewhere in here, so one of the peers type nine. So in this case, it was UMS type nine. And then I can say before, um, this was from the log file, but then I, I uh, pretty print what the CRDT looked like. So in this case, there was nothing in the CRDT. It was an empty document at that point. And then it creates a delta. So the delta it basically is an edge that is from nothing to nine. And uh, I've got like the little internal, this is what the clocks inside the Delta actually look like, but then they're serialized so you can unwrap them. Uh, for this kind of debugging, I'm sometimes using dot and one friend of mine who was working with CRDTs, he was also using dot to make like, yeah. a graph of it all. Yeah. Just one approach. Yeah, so this is, this is just, I, I wasn't intending to reuse this, I'm just doing my investigation, so. I think what we could do with this type of thing, this type of tool is I think we're going to use this over and over and over again. So it might be good to build in like a dedicated tracing functionality and some dedicated um, tooling that we can use to un un do visualizations and all sorts of things. Um, yeah. So anyway, so as if you go further down, there's different colors. So there's some like blue and red, so I, I can actually catch the replication protocol. And I can see in this particular case, I'm pretty printing out some stuff. And I can see it's building a batch. In this case, there's only one delta in the batch. Um, but in this investigation, I was going, I was able to, and then you can sort of see the, the, the CRDTs are growing here. And you can see this is the delta. So. This is the CRDD before, there's a delta. So you can see like at the end here, with the, the one where we had the problem, 88, um, if I look at the CR, CRDT final dump, there's an unmerged edge. So we can see the E um, had unmerged edge, so E, but, it wanted this value to yeah, match it's, up. It's missing it, the, it. the, um, the element from before. So, so it was only missing a single uh, element. So anyways, uh, I'm not going to go. I, I think it, it, this meeting would go on for an hour if we tried to actually debug this right now. But um, that's, that's the basic technique that I'm doing. And I think we could uh, actually um, make it more of a standard part of PeerPad in terms of being able to um, 
I don't, I don't think you want to do the logging the way I do, but like send the log off to like a side channel where it could be like, say, like archived to disk or something, and then have some tools that could bring that in and do these reconstructions. And then you could bring them into visualizations or tools that can uh, um, reconstruct um, not just one peer, but like multiple peers. Uh, the, each each peer, they could be running on different machines. You could capture a separate file in all the different machines, bring them all together, and do sort of like forensic reconstructions to figure out when things go go strange. And uh, this is I I was looking at the CRDT things now, but I think the CRDT is working. Uh, the issues with our uh, replication protocol. So. That's very interesting. Um, thank you, Jim. But, uh, I think the um, um, if you could uh, think of, of extracting some some very simple command line tools that like like you did, uh, coupled with uh, some capabilities of of uh, logging, that mm -hmm. you can add some environment variable that you can activate for to enable logging, like like the current debug um, usage that we have in uh, mm -hmm. in peer base. That would be very interesting, um, um, and also this this distributed logging is something for p2p is uh, for decentralized uh, edge uh, edge uh, applications is something that i believe it's is kind of hard uh, yeah to do but uh, every step that we can that we can get into that that will make this easier to i mean I'm, I'm, I'm perhaps in a lab environment or even in a production environment for now, a lab environment would be would be very helpful because we haven't had that. That story is not not great um, so far. But sometime later in in the production environment, where we can activate traces and and the the, the user can volunteer uh, traces, like typically, I don't know, I'm thinking about Apple that 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 does that, but in a way that is less um, infringent of privacy. That would be very yeah it's, it's it's not any different than what you do with something like dtrace or mm -hmm. wireshark or ebp right. if you know linux right. tools, so thank you um i think we that's very interesting but uh, unless someone has a, a question or observation for jim we can jump to a din for his clarification on the identity uh comment uh, there is the um, yeah. There is this comment in uh, PMIDM. Um, perhaps Adin can explain. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So there's a couple of of, of long comments there. Uh, it started with the suggestion. Um, there was a suggestion made on the thread that um, a blockchain would help with our identity problems. Um, and to, to help, I sort of broke up the identity problems into two chunks. Um, one is uh, how do you how do you find the latest version of your DID, uh, which relates a little bit to the conversation you guys had about how you can have two different users uh, or two different devices owned by the same user, both making a change to the DID. Um, and this thing is solved. This thing is solved by anything with uh, an agreement protocol, right? So a blockchain where you make sure to add all the blocks to the chain. You can make a CRDT out of the blocks, and then you can get your your structure, and you're good. Uh, you can use the leadership stuff that Dirk has been working on. That will also do it. Um, you can use the sort of multi-writer append-only graph thing that I've been working on that will also do it, right? Any of those things will solve this problem. Um, I, because none of those, uh, those are all still in development and have ups and downs to them, I added in sort of a bonus other option for solving that problem, which is the way I understand how IPFS and IPNS use the DHT is that there's this bare distributed hash table thing, and then there are validators on top of it that apply the specific rules of the system. So for IPFS, the rule is something like take your top, you know, take anyone who will host all the multi addresses of people who will host the data and take the top 20 and, and keep those around. 
And for IPNS, it's you can only push if your peer ID is the key is the IPNS key, and only keep the latest version. Um, but in theory, we could tweak those to do something specific to IPID, uh, or that helps us out. Uh, so, for instance, you could say if you receive two updates concurrently, instead of doing the IPNS thing, which is choose a winner. Instead, you could just set a flag that says, you know, error key has been compromised, or error simultaneous write. And then you would sort of fail over into stage two of figuring out what to do next, now that the bad thing has happened. Um, you also, you know, you can't really keep both of the changes around uh, in the arbitrary case. Um, in Glasgow, I spoke with, with Stephen and, and Pedro about this, how if you need to keep all of the simultaneous conflicts, then the amount of data that you're asking this uh, very kind DHT node that's storing data for free for you to have could balloon. Um, but it's possible that for the IPID case, we can make an exception because you could say if you're an IPID hosting DHT node, then you can actually do the merging yourself. You can pull the down the documents, do the merge, uh, and, and do it like that. I, I can clarify that more if, if there are questions. Um, that was sort of the, the suggestion I had as, as an alternative to all these consensus things that we're still working on. All right, so then the next, the next layer of the next question, which you guys went through, was, uh, what happens when you want to revoke a key? Uh, so solution one was uh, basically don't lose your key. Um, have a single key, use Shamir secret sharing to move it around. Don't keep a thing. Just, just please don't lose your key. OK. Um, solution two was we'll give you a key you can use, and then please don't lose the other key. Um, it's basically similar to the first one. Uh, except that, that the second one, you can lose it, like you, you, can, you can get compromised because you can use the first key yeah. to recover your identity. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So you use the first key to do things like adding, which is stuff you're going to do normally, and then for revocation, you use key B, um, and you can do that. Cool. Um, the other option I, I wrote in the note was basically the same as I had, those two were you know, also there and also part of this, but there's the possibility for another extension, um, or two extensions. One is, for the thing that has the two-layered approach, uh, it sounded in, in the video like you guys moved away from that because the fear was that you'd have to do two IPNS requests, and those can take a long time to resolve. And uh, it was also more complicated. <laughs> Uh, implement a second version of IPID, which uses the second layer um, later on, uh, once we have the MVP ready. OK. Yeah, so I guess I just wanted to clarify that you don't actually need two IPNS requests, um, because if you had something, if you had a way of like flagging, uh, you know, or solving that problem one, that, that first problem of the multi-writer thing, or having a flag, um, you could just wait until uh, the, the layer two key, the non-primary key, you could wait until that key has been compromised and then go look at the other address. Instead of looking at the primary address and forwarding to the secondary, you could look at the secondary, wait for a conflict, and then go back to the primary. So that means that you actually only need one IPNS request until a key has been compromised. So that, that helps you out there. Um, the, the other thing is secret sharing is cool, but if the problem is that you actually do end up reconstructing a key, um, and that key could get compromised. But you can use group signature schemes to say, instead of giving you know, part of my key to Pedro and part to, you know, Andrea and, and part to Jim, right? Instead, I could just say, if two out of Pedro, Andrea, and Jim 
sign my request, then that one's the real one. Right, and now there's no key to get compromised. Um, there's just a way of proving which one is the real one as opposed to which one is the one that was stolen. Um, so that's a lot of information. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can, I'll, I'll, I, I can I understand. Again, but, but yeah, uh, questions. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, I think it's now um, better uh, explain it in terms of me understanding what you were saying in the, in the GitHub issue. Um, I think that it might be worth looking into your, um, your solutions that you propose now. Uh, once we, we think about the, um, the, the, the be a better solution and more user-friendly solution for, for IPID, which is you know, the second version of IPID, because the first one um, is not very user-friendly, because whenever you pair a new device, you have to put the, the paper key or a percentage of the words there, which is not kind of friendly. A friendly process will be like pairing a device with, a, with similar to how you pair with QR codes or even some, uh, when you pair an Apple TV or something like that, where you put the code and, and the thing that just, just passes through, that will be a better user experience. Um, and that is actually possible by uh, doing a second version, second iteration of IPID, and your ideas could be incorporated in the, into that spec. Um, but because it's more complex, um, we kind of opt for the first one for now, uh, just to get the thing working, and then we can explore uh, those, like, those things later on. So I think the, the point here is uh, in the future, like let's say Ju July, we could have a new conversation regarding this matter to improve the IPAD spec um, to be more, more secure and more, more, more user-friendly as well. But I now understand what you mean with those comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I think getting something moving and getting like the project underway, even if it's just the you have one key, please don't use it, uh, lose it, is is a good way to get started. Um, the reason I think the other, a little bit of thinking on what version two is is helpful, is because at least in in a few of the different options that I, I put out there, um, having some sort of multi-writer IPNS thing is helpful. Uh, and if we feel like we're actually going to start needing that come June, July, then it means that we should make sure that that gets done by then so that we can move with it, right? Um, so it's, it's more about making sure that we have other things queued up so that when we arrive at version two, we have what we need than it is about having you guys wait on this other stuff so that you can make version one better. Uh, let me also introduce something which is, on, if, you, if you look at the diagram that we have, we'll have a um, notification. One thing is the paper key, right? Like, because the, the IPID version one uh, basically, you can't lose that key. We'll make sure that you back up that key, and, and once you're done, you, the, the key will be deleted from, from the, the IDM running on the device. Um, and the second, the, the second thing is that once we upgrade to IPID version 2 with a better, better spec and so on, we can also issue a notification there saying, hey, you should upgrade your IPID to version 2, and, and the user will follow through the process of um, uh, migrating the, the, from IPID version 1 to version 2, basically. So uh, we, can, we can leverage that later on. All right, thank you, Adin. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, that's, that's a good call, Adin, that, that we should start uh, discussing this and, and thinking about uh, things so, so that we don't remember to start on, on developing software that, that on, only on, on June or July, uh, but that, that we can plan that, that uh, before. Uh, should we need uh, multi-writer IPN, uh, uh, IPNS and all the, 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 good, the good things? Um, cool. Any anyway, questions? by the way, we, yeah. 
let me just say one thing about the multi-writer IPNS. We'll kind of um, need that for for the IP ID and also the identity, not not the identity, but the syncing of um, the verifiable credentials as well. So um, in case of the IP ID, what happens is that you might be adding two devices at um, like concurrently. And this means that two entries on the, the public key array will be concurrent, like those new uh, addition, additions. So we must solve that as well. Um, so the way we are trying to do that is to solve by having a, a CRDT layer on top. Mm -hmm. um, and that will eventually converge into, into the, the same array. Uh, we still didn't actually spec that out. I'm, I'm doing that um, as part of the, the spec paper that I'm doing, but the, this could be solved by, by, by different approaches. As you said, you can, you can do like a DAG, a DAG tree and just keep the heads and, and we store actually the heads on the on IPNS, on the IPNS record. And when we resolve the DID document, we are resolving the, those heads and so on, which, which are kind of operations, operation-based DAG, uh, and we re reconstruct the, the, the DID document based on that. But if we go this way, we aren't uh, complying with IPID spec because the IPID spec says that if I resolve that Guinness record, uh, it should give me, give me the full document right away. Um, so to accomplish that, we must have a CRDT on top and not really store operations directly on this IPNS record. So this is something that I've been thinking about and, and I will, I will think, think about this problem and probably propose something else. Yeah, I, just to clarify briefly, although I, I think I think we're on the same page. The when I say like multi-writer IPNS, like basically all I want is a way because it's going to be some CRDT thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, all I want or need is some way to actually keep track of to actually keep all of the heads, right? If it was a blockchain, I would get all the heads because someone would push them all in, mm -hmm. and then I would glue them together. If it was a consensus thing. Like Derek's been working on, it's okay because only one person is pushing all of the heads. Um, that that's that's the part that I'm trying to resolve. But underneath whatever CRDT we use, we'll be fine. Yeah, that's correct. If we if we go that way, um, as I said, we won't be compatible with IPID unless we propose a change to the IPID spec, or maybe we fork it and give it another name. I don't know. There are several ways to do that, uh, but at least we could, or we can uh, have two records. One is actually your IP ID, and that's, that maps directly to the final JSON. And also you might have a side uh, IPNS record, another IPNS record, which keeps the heads. And that's the real source of the truth if, if any conflict arises or, or something like that. But I need to think about the process and the, the, how we can approach this. Yeah, that if you... Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, so there, there are some, some solutions where you have like a Byzantine fault tolerant cluster that, that is the source of truth, but there's always the eventual consistent layer uh, for, for if you want to have be uh, high, highly available, highly available rights. And, and, and there, there's, there's, there's always some, so if you, if you need uh, to go to, go to the, the, the real source of truth, you go to the, the BF, the, the FT layer. Uh, if you just need to keep keep on 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 putting ahead, uh, you go to the um, you go to the eventual consistent layer um, for 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 reads. Um, um, yeah, that there, there's a that actually I can I can I can I can I can point you to to uh, oh yeah the, the uh, presentation we had like last uh, in in Lisbon on the IPFS Hack Week by I'll, I'll remember the name exactly, but but I'll, I'll point you to the to the video, uh, which is it's a possible of, solution for, for the problem we are we are having, like yeah, having the uh, PNS somehow related. Yeah, interesting. Um, it is. It is okay. Um, I like I like the idea of of having the IPNS record, um, which is your IP ID basically resolving to the JSON because it's very easy. And, and if we change the spec, we won't be compatible with the website, which is the ID resolver, universal the ID resolver, mm -hmm. which basically is a site of any DID. 
and they already have the IPID spec uh, method implemented there. So if we change the PD method, we have also to update the, the resolver that they are using. So I will, I will try at this phase to keep the standard compliant to the, to the, to the spec and to the standard that, that uh, um, Johnny Crunch made. And, and also uh, to solve the, um, the eventual consistency layer, we can leverage another IPNS record or just you know, pure base or, or BTV or something like that in order to store the heads and, and make them consistent. And eventually, some of the peers will write to the PNS record in a consistent way, more, more or less in a consistent way. Consistent way. Okay, um, I'll post. I'll post the link Good here. Morning. Hey. So, uh, so I'm Ali Shoker. I'm one of the co-authors. Um, sorry. Database oddities and. I just made made this this video play inadvertently. Uh, are you playing the video? Yeah, I, I thought someone was was talking. Sorry about that. Uh, it, I don't know how, how the, 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 the audio loop uh, went in here. So yeah, yeah, I pasted the video about that I was referring. Maybe interesting or not, I'm not sure. Um, but there's, there's, there's um, uh, that could be an interesting source of inspiration. Anyway, I think we're way past the, our, our, our bedtime. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to close this here. Um, Discussions. I mean, we can we can continue them in uh, on GitHub or, or or get specific meetings for that. Um, otherwise, I will see you next week. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye bye.